darling little active children to listen to this programming, this nonsense about, oh, good grief, it drives me crazy. I mean, you know, and then, of course, you have to say what parent would do that to a child to, to you know, put him someplace where, well, don't get me started on the education <laughs> system. Pardon yes. me, the school system. I don't have a problem with education. It's schooling. It's <laughs> definitely just wrong for children. It's, anyway, so then, but, but here's the thing, you know, and I, I said to a friend, I said, you know, it's funny, my parents' generation um, missed the boat completely. Their parents saw the shift. Like, my grandparents must have seen the shift. They must have witnessed that there was something really wrong. For, for example, I had uh, one of my grandfathers used to write um, an article in the Toronto paper uh, way back in the 30s, and one of his bylines, um, he, pardon me, he used to have a column, and his one of his bylines was, we are being governed and taxed to death. Well, when I saw that, I jumped out of my chair. I said, good God, it's in my DNA. <laughs> now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. But the point was, he knew there was something wrong. And so did I, unbeknownst. But you see, my, my father or my parents' generation, they missed the whole thing. They didn't witness it going from real to unreal. And their parents didn't know enough to say this is the way it used to be and look how bad it is now. Mm. So they kind of missed the whole thing, and they didn't live long enough to hear me say to them, look, this is, this is you, you were the generation that was completely unconscious. Mm. At least my grandfather knew there was something wrong. But I'm not saying that my parents didn't have a glimpse of it. I'm just saying they were powerless. They were raised in the bad system, and they weren't powerful enough to do something about it. So so my grandparents' generation knew there was something wrong and here we are two generations later doing something about it because we've you know, we've gotten we've gotten the message that we're it and if we don't do something about it we're all sunk. Yes, yes. And it hasn't it maybe something to do as well uh, it's it depends on you know the nature of the time that you're living in. If if you're <clears throat> kind of in a in a in a happy state, so to, so to speak. If if things if if your surrounding is good, you're uh, you know you're 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 having a good job, you have the money, you, you have no, kind of no, no reason to upset the system, right? Then you don't want to kind of you don't want to rock the boat in that position. But but if you're if you're under some kind of pressure or or the the system that you're in isn't providing for you, then you consequently begin to ask questions as well so in a way it's kind of good that uh, these kind of minor little uh, uh, tragedies if you will that you know temporarily financial system is a bit low but that 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 spawns people to actually ask questions about the system itself and the nature of it isn't that right perfect you are right on that's exactly it let's face it we all know wealthy people who say well <laughs> I'm hardly going to do something about it. It's worked for me. Yes. But we know way more people who have been beaten up. I mean, I said to a friend yesterday, I said, I don't even think I associate with anybody who hasn't been to jail. <laughs> <laughs> really? Do you know what I mean? There's just so many people who have gotten into some trouble, some form of trouble, from the alleged authorities. They're not authorities, but because it's spreading, they're so desperate, they're picking on people that, you know, 50 years ago, if you heard they were in trouble with the law, my God, this was unheard of. Mm. But now it's everybody. Mm. I mean, everybody knows somebody that's in trouble. So you're right. We could look at this as a blessing in disguise because that's what builds the fire under us, right, and makes us move. Yeah. Because how many of us would have continued to sit back? In fact, I get letters and emails all the time from people who say, you know, I was just going along, like uh, everything was well, I guess it's good enough. And then suddenly, bam, I got hit with this. Well, now I'm taking a look at it. Well, this is actually good. I mean, I'm sorry that people are losing their houses and worse. Of course. Uh, being locked up. But at least it's forcing people to say, okay, we got it. There's something wrong here. We yes. need to fix this. We need to take a look at it. Now, I will say this. Unfortunately, for the past dozen years or so, which is as long as I've been doing this, we've been fighting them. We've been saying, you can't do this to us. And, of course, that's absolutely the wrong way to tackle anything, never mind this. So, fortunately, somebody got it into his brain to say, maybe this is supposed to work for us. Maybe this has been designed to work for us. Let's take a look at that and see where that might be. Well, sure enough, he came up with, it 
it's written in their laws. They're supposed to be working for us. We just got these rogue agents in there temporarily who shouldn't be there. They're just, you know, selfish, arrogant bastards. Oh, pardon me. Um, <laughs> That's fine. You can say it. <laughs> yeah, okay. So anyway, um, you know, who are essentially just taking advantage of a situation. Yes. And they're not serving their brothers. And that's going to come back and bite them. It really will. They're, they're, you know, they're going to be sorry someday that they've, that they've hurt their fellow man. Because you can't, you can't get away from that stuff, can you? So, um, anyway, the, the way to fix it is simply to say, do your job. And if you're not going to do your job, then I will file a commercial lien against you. And that will freeze everything. And that will make you do your job. So it's kind of, but you don't tell them, you just do it. Sure. Now, um, it's a bit of a process filing this commercial lien. It's not that hard, but it's, you know, you kind of have to sort of know what you're doing, and um, most but people don't. How, how about, I, is, how about uh, I mean, lawyers? Is there any kind of people in regards to how this operates that you actually can, uh, you know, go to and, and ask for this, or is that a bad idea to go to a lawyer or something like that? Well, number one, uh, lawyers don't know what we're doing. Except okay, for right. Who have made the effort to find out. Right. They're they're completely in the dark. In other words, you think about people who have been misled. Holy jumping! So, um, so not only do they not know, if you go to them because they're so dependent upon their position, like they've been so brainwashed, they'll defend their position right or wrong. So there's really no point in talking to them, right? So the other thing is, so if you hire an attorney to represent you, well, now you've just given away your sovereignty, right? Because you, you're not declaring that, that you're a man on the land and you can manage your own affairs. Yes. Crying to somebody saying, well, will you help me? Well, that doesn't get you anywhere, does it? So, <laughs> yes. Uh, so, yeah, I'd leave the, leave the attorneys out of it. <laughs> they don't know. They're not going to help you. Yes. Um, unless you've got one who's, who's got an open mind, but I've never met one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, I mean, um, let's see here. For people that are then interested to kind of in really following up this, and, and uh, uh, let's say that the listeners are in, in, in the U.S., they're in Canada, Australia, or even somewhere in Europe, in Scandinavia, um, what, what, you, what, you, what would you recommend the first thing to do? I guess go through your book, of course, and read that thoroughly. Uh, but then at that point, is, is there a, a website somewhere you can go in order to find out more about more the exact names of the documents, et cetera, you know, to, to get things going, to get started on this? You know, I wish there were a very um, straightforward place to go. There's a whole lot on the Internet about this, but it's, um, it's confusing and complicated and convoluted because, um, you know, I, I read a lot of stuff and I think, well, he could have put that into one page. And I don't want to read 50. Yes. And there's audios and there's there's all kinds of stuff. And um, uh, the only thing, what I'm intending to do is as I grasp better and better what's really going on, I intend to put my um, grasp of it on my blog. And... Um, and even at that, if I come up with something that I think is particularly brilliant on my blog, I will, by that I mean if I find something that's brilliant, on my blog I will direct people to it. But I have this feeling that my job, because people write these documents and, and read them, and they're, first of all they're too long, and second they're badly written. And that annoys me because I think, well, now I don't know who you're talking about. Who's they? So mm. it, it sort of bothers me. So as I come to an understanding about what's really, what this is really all about, I write an article about it and I post it. And not only does that help me understand what I'm doing, but I think it makes it easier for other people. Now, I'm not saying that, I'm, that I've written the best stuff out there. I'm just saying I think I'm good at making it succinct and, and well-written, presuming that I grasp the concept accurately. But I wouldn't write anything unless I did. So if it's not there, it's because I don't get it. But right. I'm catching on like way, way, way better and faster because I'm sort of doing the, I'm doing some of the research here. Yes. And even if that happens to be studying other people's stuff. Um, but, I, but I just have to say, 